Hello, everyone. Today is um, Thursday, June the 2nd. Uh, it is now 5.11 p.m. Um, and like I said before, I'll do this as much as I can when I can. Just been a little busy this week, and then um, I'll be going out of town uh, tomorrow. So I might miss you guys this weekend. I might not be able to get in here to do any type of a update until possibly Sunday evening when I return. So we'll see how that, how that pans out. But in the meantime, between the time, I definitely want to do one now because the market is still in rally mode. As you guys see from today, we're still in rally mode. So that we're still experiencing this um, bull run within a bear market. So bullish run within a bear market. Um, I want to start by taking a look at the weekly charts of um, all three major averages. And then we'll take a look at the weekly chart also of the VIX. Just to get a sense of uh, what's happening now. So... Um, I like to try to take a look at some of these rallies, um, these um, you know, within the market rallies that we've been experiencing and uh, try to get a general sense of what we could expect. <clears throat> Nothing's always perfect, but I like to try to um, take a sense of what we could expect. So the last time when we um, had this long stretch of red in the weekly, right before that, we had a nice little move up in markets. And a lot of I like I like to try to pay attention to these um, rally days, sort of say, or rally weeks, sort of say, to try to get a general idea of what we could expect for the next possible rally within this bear market. So if I was to take that same angle. and attach it to the previous rally we had. You can see it's almost just about the same distance. It's about the same distance. So that will lead me to believe that it is a very possible chance that we could be in store for the same type of situation that we are now. So we could see a little bit more rally in the um, S&P and all the major averages for, for that sake. <clears throat> and it looks like the S&P, look at this weekly chart. We are uh, weekly chart on a weekly chart. We are very um, getting very close to approaching this um, 20, 200, I'm sorry, 50 day moving average. And very close to that 50 day moving average, which will put us just above that 23.6% Fibonacci retracement area. So get to that point, we have to see what pans out. Could we um, pause there and, and reverse? That's a possibility. Could we go right through it? That is a possibility. But right now, this 50-day moving average um, is setting up to act as an area of resistance. So we'll let's see how that pans out. But that is um, my belief. We're still in the bear market. We haven't broken out of this bear market just yet. So. One second, folks. So, um, yeah. So, just uh, you know, we still still haven't having uh, those those bulls that enjoying this um this rally that we have within this within this bear market. So again, could see a little bit more um, rally. There's a lot of um, strong uh, a lot of stocks that have been so over oversold. So they're getting these nice chances to um, see some kind of rebound. So again, I'm um, looking for stocks to continue up, possibly for just a little while longer to so at least get up to the 50 day moving average on the weekly. And if I was to look at a daily chart of the S&P, you see we are just about to possibly break that uh, 50 day moving average on the daily. So we're gonna see how that pans out. If we do break that, again, for around a little bit over 4,200, maybe on the um, SPY, I mean, I'm sorry, on the S&P, a little bit over 4,200, um, which is where we could possibly be, be heading. We're gonna see how that pans out. See, that, see what that, how that pans out over the next day or so. Now let's switch to our infamous NASDAQ. So 
NASDAQ Composite. Same here. NASDAQ could, um, out of the a bunch, because NASDAQ has probably been the most oversold. It could rally a little bit more, probably a little bit more than others, possibly. Um, could possibly rally all the way up to try to meet that 200, um, 50 day moving average or um, the 50 day moving average and the price action could meet somewhere in the middle. Okay, we have to see how that pans out. Um, if we was to try to get a sense, a sensible idea of where another um, way, another way to look at it is by taking a look at a Fibonacci retracement from the COVID lows um, to the um, to the recent to the um, this year's high. We're gonna try to draw a fib real quick here. All right. So with that fib, you can see we got that perfect bounce off the 50 day moving average. Almost just about tipped up, tiptoed below, below just a bit, and then we got a, a nice little bounce. So we could continue to see the NASDAQ composite rallies a little while longer. Um, maybe through the rest, rest of this week and maybe part even next week too. So um let us see how that pans out. But all, all in all, I still think this 50 day moving average is going to continue to trend lower. And eventually, price and that 50 day is going to meet somewhere um, where we could see a stall begin. So, in the next week or so, we could continue to see some bullishness within this market. We got to see how it pans out. So, I'm just watching closely to see um, what happens as price gets closer to this 50 day. And also, we're going to look at the VIX too, because the VIX also can be a sign as to if we stop early. Stop midway before we even get to that 50 day and I'll start to reverse. Eventually, I think these two price action and the 50 day is going to meet on the weekly at some point. Let's look at the uh, take a look at a daily chart real quick. So again, it's still a little bit more room for the NASDAQ uh, on this daily chart to um, continue to run a little bit higher. Again, I got to see what happens once we get to this 50 day. Do we stop at this 50 day and um, and reverse or uh, do we continue up a little bit higher until we meet the 50 day on the weekly chart? We have to see how that pans out. All in all, I still think there's still just a little bit more room for these stocks to run. All right, now let's take a look at the Dow. All right, now here's our Dow Jones. This was interesting because the Dow, it is extremely close and it hasn't um, performed that great. Had a nice day today. It was up over, like, like, it's like over 400 points. But again, considering where we fell from, <clears throat> it's not, this, this rally is happening is nothing compared to uh, where we were at at the beginning of the year. So. Again, approaching this 50-day moving average on the weekly. We have to see how what happens once we get to it, once we get there. Um, normally that uh, area is going to act, um, possibly act as a strong area of resistance. Um, previously, we bumped above it back in March and got just above it, hovered above it for a couple of weeks, and then we came right back down. So could we go back above it here? Yeah, that's a possibility. And um, maybe start to stall for a few weeks and then come back down. So that's also a, a um, scenario. And looking at the daily chart, yeah, pretty much just hovering just below that 50-day moving average on the daily. Will we punch through it? We have to see what happens tomorrow, how strong we get tomorrow. There's a, um, a, a I think a charge point number out at 8:30, so that could be, um, you know, um, you know, a catalyst to send markets either way, either um, continue to bump up above this, um, these um, um, short-term moving averages or come back down. Either way, I don't think we're going to go too far above these moving averages if we do continue to go up. Definitely not not to, yeah, I'm not expecting any new all-time highs. So Mark's going to find some uh, ceiling here eventually. 
And if we was to draw a fib on this one to get a general idea where we could see a pause, and it's like we had to we had to, we had to trust and believe in in the um 50 day movement average on this one because we already broke the lotus 23.6 percent and came right back right back above it. Now we're approaching this 50 day moving average on this weekly chart of the Dow Jones. So I do believe that that's going to be a strong area of resistance. We're going to see how it pans out. Last but not least, let's take a look at the Russell. Same case with the Russell. As the moving as this 50 day moving average continues to come down, it is more than likely going to act as an area of um, resistance. So, uh, with that said, we have a little bit of space between price action now and the moving average. So we could see um, continued rally over the next week or two. And these are weekly candles, folks. So that means we could see a you know a rally the rest of this week, and then maybe some next week to, um, to pull, possibly touch that 50 day. And then let's see what happens after that. Now let's take a look at the VIX real quick. Now, that VIX, I told you guys, you got to really pay attention to the VIX. The VIX give us a precursor of um, what we can expect to see in overall markets. Now, I highlighted this, this, this long area here, which is the area of um, strong area of resistance and support on the VIX. And as you can see, with this week, even with this weekly chart, we have breached that, that level. Um, and we're approaching the 50 day movement average on the, um, uh, as, and our, as an area of support. So, we could definitely be um, in an area where we could start to see a strong bounce on VIX over the next week or two. So keep that in mind. Um, we're right just in that, um, just below uh, that area of um, support and just above that 50 day moving average on the weekly. So those two are about to meet. We could definitely see a bounce, a bigger bounce in the VIX come next week. And here's our four hour chart of the VIX. I'd like to point this out. See how close we are to hovering right around that 50 day, I mean, that um, area of support. Right back at it again. Moving averages are coming down right along with price action. So, could we get a strong bounce on the, on the four hour chart and rally back above that 50 day moving average? That is, that is always a possibility. If you look at the um, full stochastics and the wins percentage, we're definitely in oversold territories. RSI is around an oversold area, but not not had not dipped into the oversold territory, and, and it doesn't have to. Um, full stochastics and wins percentage have been in oversold. Looks like now for for a for a couple of days. Here's a daily chart of that same same VIX again. Full stochastics and wins percentage are definitely in oversold territories. Um, price action is 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 hovering just below. Um, the 50 day moving average and right around that area of support uh, for the VIX. Look at one more and I'll call it a day, folks. I'm extremely exhausted. This is going to be a pretty quick video just to give you guys an uh, update on what markets are showing us. And believe it or not, folks, even with all the moving back and forth, crude is still strong. Update down, the update down, the crude, the trend in crude. Is just in a steady upward trending pattern. We have, you know, some down moments and we bounce right back. Crude now is uh, finished the day around 117, a little bit over 117. Looks like it's creeping ever so slowly back up towards that 129 level that I keep pointing out. I think a strong possibility we're going to end up testing, we could we end up testing that level uh, sometime this summer. And here's our weekly chart of crude and as you can see um still forming this little rounded formation as we came down and we're starting to curl right back up and that's still intact so still intact to continue this move back up um we got a green a, a light blue parabolic saw to start to form on this weekly chart so um, crew could um, see much more strength here in the near future. All right, folks, that is all I have for you guys. Um, again, pay close attention to the VIX. Um, VIX is getting close 
to a bottom, I think, um, in the near term bottom. Between that 24 to 25 levels is where I'm really focusing on it fixing. We already below 25. So um, if the VIX drops much lower than that, we can see a strong rally in the market. I mean, we started to get around 22, 20, uh, which I don't think we're going to see. But if we do, that means the markets are just really ripping to the upside. But there's a lot of markets have a lot of overhead resistance um, start, starting to come up. So it has to deal with it overhead resistance right around those moving averages on a longer term chart, such as the uh, weekly and the monthly. All right, folks. Um, until next time, I'll see you guys on the next video. Enjoy the rest of your evening and enjoy your weekend if I don't um, get the chance to uh, catch up with you guys before I roll out.